This is Immersive Talk, the podcast all about the people, processes and technology behind immersive experiences in the Southwest and beyond. My name is Harrison Wilmot, Brechtian 360 filmmaker. My guest for Chapter 4 is Christina Constantino, not a fellow fellow this time, but a fellow student on our Master of Arts in VR at UWE and a game design lecturer. In this episode, me and Chris chat about our trip to London to attend a symposium about scaling intimacy in theatre and games, presented by Zoo UK and Tag Montreal. In the latter half of the podcast, we talked extensively about Zoo UK's immersive binaural dinner date experience. So, spoilers ahead for that. But we started off the discussion with accents. So, so. here's the awkward beginning bit, when we're like, <laughs> what the fuck we should talk about? <laughs> This is nice. We're starting. We're starting. Beginning. Kind go. Of, your accent is kind of um, a little bit American, kind of yeah. like mine. Yeah. Because I'm not American at all or have any yeah. affiliation with America. Yeah. But for some reason, every now and again, my accent like shifts into American and people are like, are you American? I'm like, no. <laughs> Where did that come from? Yeah. I don't know. I, I think it might be because... Um, a lot of TV shows? Yeah. Too Probably. much American TV shows. Yeah. Well, I obviously, I um, grew up or I was in an international school. And for some mm. reason, in international schools, it's just a common thing that you pick up this weird hybrid yeah. American Canadian thing. It's so, just like, Rrr, yeah, and which like I feel like kind of makes sense if you think about America and it is actually like an amalgamation yeah. of totally like, all like, these like different accents and people yeah. groups coming together. So maybe that's what it is. Maybe, you know, the more diverse we come, mm. the more American we sound. Like, I, boink, I, <laughs> boink. I heard um, that the way Americans talk now, mm. or the way some Americans talk now, is actually how old English people used to speak. Yeah, I've heard that as well. Point. And I think because of all the influences from like other parts of Europe mm. has obviously changed the accent mm. of people in the UK. Yeah. So there you go. I wonder what we're going to sound like in like 150 years. American. No. Totally. <laughs> I reckon we'll sound probably like Kiwi-ish. Kiwi-ish. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah, I don't know. Or maybe more Asian sounding. Yeah. Maybe like more kind of... They're just going to take yeah. over the world. Well, I mean, the most spoken language is actually Mandarin, mm. isn't it, though? So, who knows? Who knows? It's hard to there speak you go. Language. Watch this space in the next how many 150 years? 150 years. <laughs> 150 years. <laughs> we Watch won't this be space, here, humans. But... <laughs> you, human, out human there. Human race is like, got it. <laughs> yeah, we got it. All right, pinned it. Sure. What what did we do the other day? So we went to London exactly. on a Sunday, which was fun. Fun like school trip out. Mm. Um, and yeah, had a very interesting uh, dinner date experience. Yeah, so that was at the end of the That evening. was at the end of it. Yeah. yeah Before we'll that, that, there was um, a lot of... Talking and like Talks chats, and a discussion. Panels. Yeah, they had panel talks and they had sort of discussions. And I mean, before that, they had sort of like demo games as well yeah like um so. they had a couple of so they in this regard is zoo uk and yes. tag t-a-g zoo tag zoo tag do cool stuff do cool stuff in in the immersive, immersive space in the immersive yeah. performance space at the moment um and they decided to run this conference symposium mm -hmm. about scaling intimacy yeah do you know what that means Scaling it to me. Are you yeah. just trying to summarize what the whole conference yeah. was? Is that what you're asking me? Yeah. <laughs> I'm putting you on the spot. I mean, there were a lot of different... I mean, there were like quite a lot of viewpoints and there were a lot of different points that were brought up, which I thought was really interesting. Not only from not only from like sort of immersive creative point of view, but you had one of the panelists... I found the panel, like the actual panel, really kind of interesting. Mm. One of the panelists, um, Ilsa, she was a youth worker yes. in like sort of the LGBTQ... Yeah community specifically working with trans youth um and it was a really interesting like really interesting points that she made throughout it talking about intimacy and what that means to sort of different groups um but not only that in terms of even how you deal with intimacy in sort of public spaces um so it's not only in sort of a immersive media context but just in general and i guess you could apply that then also to the experiences you create as well mm. um yeah i thought that really kind of stood out to me really is that this idea of intimacy but um i guess not only what intimacy means to you 
individually, but also how then you interact in public spaces. Um, and I guess also just with myself being a woman and also being brown, mm. how then you navigate intimacy um, with other people and also publicly in spaces that may not always be designed with you in mind as well. Yeah. Totally. So yeah, does that does that answer your no, question? Yeah, that's really good. I <laughs> wanted to hear your insight on like yeah. the, one of the things you took out from it the most, mm, and yeah. it's similar mm. similar ideas in terms of where where is where does intimacy intimacy take yeah. place, and like mm. how do we make intimacy happen, and yeah. where? I think that's really interesting as immersive content creators as well. That's kind of the crux. Mm. of what we do is creating an intimate moment whatever that mm. intimate moment may be um and i think you know it's not just in this thing you know if whether you're doing it in like the headset or whatever it is but then also in the space you're creating and then obviously if you a cool well. um distinction was not about what well, like the creator or the audience but more uh the space in between mm. that's where it, yeah. where it happens or where it should happen mm. Um, but then also everyone has a different idea of where exactly. intimacy comes yeah. from. So levels everyone upon levels, different. really. Yeah. And about how to unpack what, the, what it means. Intimacy within intimacy environments, people, mm. places. Scaffolding because, intimacy. Yes. How there was a lot like, of talk about yeah. scaffolding as well, wasn't there? What was that? That was um, Bart Simon. Bart Simon who, from Tibu's from TAG. Yeah. He was a sociologist. He, he did game studies, game studies from yeah. a sociological perspective. Yeah which I thought was incredibly interesting. He had um, a lot of really interesting things to say. When yeah. At the beginning, when we had little five-minute introduction mm. talks from each of the main contributors, little provocations. Yeah. Um, I can't remember any of the other ones apart from Rita Wu. But anyway, mm. afterwards, we had little 40-minute um, discussions with those speakers. And I sat on Bart's table for a long time because yeah. it was just fascinating. Yeah. Um, I can't remember... What we were chatting about, but just remember it being extremely fascinating. I remember I came in right at the end. It was this whole. I remember we got onto the subject because I remember I had brought up. We had brought up so many random games like Counter Strike and Fortnite, mm. and it was this idea of when you play games, for example, like Counter Strike. There's a lot of like rep, like repetitive action that you do in order to then gain skill with it. Mm. Um, and it's kind of this idea of the more you do it, the more kind of connected you then feel with the game. My argument was was that I hated playing Counter Strike <laughs> because I died in the first yeah. two seconds. Yeah, it's um, and there was like yeah. weird accessibility with it in terms of obviously if you got into the game earlier on mm. and you built your skill up, obviously then you have a different connection than someone just coming in. Yeah, totally. And it was like we talked about a lot about um, in a way kind of immersive like theater and this idea of sort of elitism that come kind of comes yes. with it so um, once you're established a group yeah then you kind of get to know those kind yeah. of the systems involved in that group and then uh, one thing leads to another and you have a country yeah, exactly <laughs> you, you need to kind of do various steps to join and things can you yeah um so yeah he was talking about um like yeah the vision of uh, versions of like social engineering mm. and like getting people to do things together and that yeah. being generally the, the hardest thing generally in civilization mm. let alone in trying to get people to experience the same yeah kind of well experience together yeah. um and then adding like an extra level of trying to get society to change yeah. or, or like get us to change our behavior within mm -hmm. that as well being really really difficult but i find it fascinating that yeah. He's thinking about that kind of stuff. I think it was fascinating, again, using kind of that game logic, but then also then applying, because that's the whole point of the collaboration that they do, is that um, his team comes from a more kind of game studies, mm. game kind of theory background. And and that's more, that's your from, you've got that background Yeah, as well. so that's, so I kind of was like, ooh, yeah, <laughs> my people. But, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, thinking about that way, but also how they can bring the interactivity then into this immersive, creative kind of performance mm. um, industry where obviously now they're starting to see a crossover. Um, and how do you, yeah, and how do you kind of merge that, especially when you are in a headset mm. um, and the interactivity in what you do is slightly different than you would be in an actual kind of immersive performance mm. piece. 
So yeah, it's kind of borrowing um, knowledge, I guess, from each yeah. in creating experiences. And one thing which really fascinated me there as well was that <coughs> all these kind of tools about getting people to do things mm. and like getting people to feel intimate and therefore feel a change within themselves mm. is all about trying to get people to do one thing when they actually yeah. do another, like an action, actionable change or something yeah. like that. And how how do we as creators yeah. go about that? And then how do we t- t- do it with like a small group of people and then do it with mm, actually yeah. going back, scaling up, scaling up yeah. to like a huge number of people? Yeah. And that led fed into <clears> my <throat> own like kind of pet project at the moment, which is about yeah. well, how if we if we've got all these tools and techniques to like change people's minds, mm-hmm. should we be giving people a heads up that we're yeah. intending to change their mind? Yeah. Um, um, I mean, like, does that defeat then the whole purpose? Well, yeah, it's of kind it. of like because a content people... spoiler, like a content warning, which is like a spoiler. Yeah, I do feel maybe in some way people will be more resistant, especially when you have a tag being like, this will change your mind. Mm. And yeah, I feel yeah. some people automatically will be like, well, we'll see about that. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I want to get this idea out and like in into the into the sphere of yeah. the world because I've been thinking about this for a while but I want more people to be thinking about it and contributing mm-hmm. to this idea about is is it right that we should uh, in, in an interest of being transparent and then as creators not <clears throat> have our content be um, uh, messed with down the line by like institutions organizations government yeah. regulation yeah because it's getting relatively easy or possible mm-hmm. soon with especially with biometric storytelling yeah. and all that jazz <clears throat> that we can quite easily and intentionally manipulate people's emotions and yep. and their experiences so they end up feeling uh, a difference in their reactions so they have a they, they do they have an actionable change in their mind brain chemistry whatever. true but then also i'm i'm always a little bit like how is that a lasting effect though do you get what i mean mm. like you know it's that whole thing with um oh what i can't even remember there's a term for it but um you know it's that whole thing with um like environmental issues mm. in that because it's like you know like so many images of polar bears to a point where people um, have now gotten sick of it Des- desensitization type thing. yes yeah, yeah yeah so it comes a point mm. of actually because really we're actually shown a lot of shocking things on a daily basis and it's something that you know is we're bombarded with Mm. um so i'm always a little bit like really how how much will this change our point of view if we're already being desensitized to certain things um and obviously because this is such a new thing and there hasn't been any a long-term research on Mm. it be interesting to see like is does it have a lasting effect or is it literally just you know for like that experience right after it for a certain amount of time or hours or whatever it is that you know you might have an increased sense of mm. empathy mm. but then, then that kind of but then that kind of trails off, off. yeah because yeah. um, I do think that you know with a lot of the content out there unless obviously it's for a specific thing for example like therapy I think that's a whole like kind of different mm. type of you know yeah because there's um <clears throat> I think there's a company called Helium, spelled yeah. H-E-A-L-M, mm. um, who are doing that kind of shifting your yeah. your perspective on yourself, your brain chemistry, yeah. by actually like showing you mm. uh, a kind of an EEG of your kind yeah. of brain activity, yeah. and then kind of mapping that to a um, a uh, kind of 3D model of a yeah. butterfly coming Ooh. out of its of its cocoon. Yeah. Um, when you're when you when you're feeling calm, yeah. Um, so but then that like, would be in an actual whole kind of therapeutic kind of setting. Yes, yeah. With then sort of a counselor or a therapist who's then reinforcing. Yeah, I don't know if it's got with itself. like the actual therapist on top, but yeah. So you're kind of wondering about yeah. Mm. Once we kind of go through that experiences, yeah, it will. Do we need to just continue doing those experiences? Yeah. And I reckon that's probably part of their business model, actually. Yeah. <laughs> so you then can become reliant on that experience to yeah. get calm or feel better. Um, but yeah, I think that's kind of an interesting 
point in terms of, you know, as much as something can be really shocking, you know, long term, then how would that affect? Because I do feel like, you know, if, if it's quite traumatic, then fair enough, you mm. know, <laughs> that might have a lasting effect on you. Mm. But I, yeah, I'm just wondering whether warning, like, like would, would there be a need as well? I, that's, that's all I'm thinking. Yeah. Would there be a need? I know some things would probably would as well, but I'm also just interested have, in like yeah. a, an intensity. Yeah. rating at the moment uh, in on the Oculus store anyway it's mm-hmm. got like mild or like comforting mild and then intense yeah um and I think that's important yeah because definitely because it's not giving too much away but it does tell you mm. you know what you're about to experience could yeah. be like shit's gonna get crazy. yeah it's gonna be <laughs> mad but I, I I'm also just still in the same mind that if we're as creators like intending to like we've designed and we've got mm. a specific plans and like we use technology to try and shift somebody's perspective mm-hmm. should we just like give a little heads up saying we intend to change your mind with this yeah and then maybe yeah. down the line maybe the audience are like this didn't work yeah 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 and that would be a good kind of feedback system as well yeah i'd be interested to see like how that would really work mm. um and to see whether it does work mm. whether people are like this was life-changing yeah or, yeah like you're saying like, you know you don't know shit yeah <laughs> about what you're doing <laughs> No, but yeah, I think that it's it's quite an interesting point, and I think as creators, is something that we need to be aware of. Yeah, for real. At least thinking yeah. about it. There we go. I just want people to think about this. Think about <laughs> it, guys. Cool. <laughs> testing, testing. One, two, three. Sounds good, I think. Okay. Ooh. Okay, so we're back. Mm-hmm. Part two. Part two. So brief before, maybe not part two, this is just like the second bit oh. of part one. <laughs> <laughs> after the interlude. Yes, after um, I went for a nice walk. There was a couple of couple of things in from the TAG symposium. Yeah. Um, which I just wanted to kind of chat to you a little bit further about. Sure. The nature of intimacy mm-hmm. uh, or the difference of intimacy between yeah. theatre and games, which are kind of the main two industries which are kind of um, amalgamating of, yeah. into like immersive mm. experiences. Yeah. Those are like two different ideas of intimacy. Mm. What's your perspective on that? I mean, I do find it really interesting because I think... I think a lot of, obviously, I'm the only one kind of, within another group we have that is, that is specifically from a games background. Or, I mean, obviously, I do appreciate that. I'm not the only one who plays games and all of that kind of thing. Um, but I do find it interesting um, in regards to intimacy in games because it is so different of, you know, in terms of that immersive theatre and how I don't know, that word intimacy is thrown around quite mm. a lot more. And in games, I don't know, you don't... It's not really a thing that's spoken about, even though games can be quite intimate. Um, and I guess the first thing is, is, you know, when you think about intimacy between between people, mm. right? Because I think that was the thing that was talked about yeah. um, in the actual symposium, is that this idea of intimacy is something between people where it's there's a reciprocation that's occurring, yes, yes. right? Yes, so there's more of a a, a, a kind of a, emotional understanding between yeah, people. Yeah, exactly. Um, and I guess you do find that in games, and I think that was the main thing that was brought up um, in Bart's kind of discussion, was that when, you know, especially with online kind of games, um, in that you do create quite you can create quite intimate relationship Mm. with people that you have never met before and maybe never will ever meet um you know you might not even know their name or what they look like yet you can have quite an intimate relationship because um you go online you play um yeah you work well as a team they Mm. have your back and um you know there's that poignant comment that he made about um a gamer on counter-strike where they didn't, they never spoke to each other. Whatever they played, he always knew that this guy had his back. Mm. It's um, like a familiarity. Exactly. It's a build, a building of familiarity. Yeah. It's like a, an evolution of, mm-hmm. well, it's a friendship, I suppose. Yeah. yeah. And I think it's, it's quite an interesting, it's quite interesting because obviously there is that element of 
you don't have that physical presence mm. there, even though you can still feel intimate. Um, but also it's not talked about. Mm. I think the language around it, particularly within the games industry, yeah. it's not a thing that you think about when you think about games and you know, particularly being intimate in that kind of sense as you mm. would do with you know, a um, kind of more performative piece. Yeah. Because there's that lack of a physical body there. Um, and and I do also think as well, I mean, there's so much within the games industry um, that can exclude certain groups. Yeah. And I think there's also that kind of dialogue that's happening as well. Um, for example, me personally, I don't play actually online games. I used to um, back when I was younger. And then I just, yeah, then I didn't really get into it. And I think because of the fact that being female and playing mm. in sort of on you know in an online community can sometimes be really tricky to navigate and you don't really want to open yourself up to that no um and it's you know it, it's so much easier to kind of play the single player games um or obviously you know you know if you know you have friends who do play making sure that you know you're only playing it with certain people but again it kind of excludes you then mm. from a greater sort of narrative and that Just greater to community get your perspective on this do you think mm. that's because there's a like a deficit of um interaction that most of the gamer community has with females um, so yeah. <laughs> with, with people they're not used to chatting to i think that because when you do look at the whole um demographics there are a lot of women and you know um, people who do identify as being female who do play video games I think it's just the mo more popular um, titles mm. don't always include, mm. you know, other demographics within that storyline. Therefore, don't saying that we don't play games. It's just that we don't. I, I, for one, tend to stay away from online multiplayer type of games mm. because of the fact that it can get quite precarious for me. Yeah. Um, so I do enjoy kind of more narrative, you know, RPG, those type of games, which is kind of more single player. Um, and I can, I have a bit of safety mm. within that, you know. Um, but yeah, I think it does kind of limit that interaction. I think, and I think that is just how the game industry works. Yeah, I think it's and how I it's think, Yeah, and I up. think it's, yeah, I think that's just how it's progressed. And there have been moves to obviously um, change things, mm. um, and and that is move and that is moving in you know in the right direction, yeah. but it's still very slow. And I think when you do have you know majority of the demographic mm. is you know going to be young, male, white, mm. heterosexual. Do you think so, that's because yeah. it's grown out of the, an industry from like the the culture at the time when games started was like very mm. much like that. Yeah, no, definitely. And it's just kind of carried mm. on and now it's Yeah, definitely. In its and space. I think and I think that's one of the things where um you can kind of see even with um sort of the VR industry in of mm. itself where it's borrowed that tech from that game industry and mm. it with that carries all those kind of inherited yeah. you know stereotypes and all yeah. that within it and I think Behaviors. yeah exactly and I think now it's really important as creators because it's still so new that you know we can push it in the right yeah. direction and that's what I was opening. going yeah. going on to is like mm. now we're in this new space of yeah combining these kind of old systems and but into yeah. creating something new in terms of immersive experiences mm. and we and now because in the culture we live in now is yeah. much more progressive and yeah inclusive we have an opportunity now to kind of reshape or to sh shape anew mm. our, our industry into something which is much more, yeah. well, better yeah. in terms of it, like making mm. it, and ex experiences generally just more open and just understanding, yeah. you know, and more intimate, mm. more... And I think that's interesting with the crossover with sort of, um, you know, theater. the more, yeah, the more performance yeah. theatre. Because general, I think performance theatre is quite inclusive, and there's there's such um, there is you know such a dialogue around intimacy and you know safety and obviously the audience, like all that is taken mm. into account, which is so different, I think, with what you get in the game in the gaming kind yeah. of industry. It's such a different way of kind of thinking, um, 
so yeah having those kind of like two worlds meet um and obviously within this sort of emerging industry as well mm. i mean hopefully that can only mean good things yeah i'm hoping <laughs> yeah and i so good. far i think you know especially with um you know, zoo tag and what they've mm. been able to do i think it's such you know a great thing because obviously it's pulling at things that each do really well yeah and trying to bring that bring that together to create obviously really awesome experiences for people but yeah i do think it's kind of interesting um just the way that things are made from both sides because it's such a different kind of approach mm. um especially when you know you think about interactivity in terms of you know performance theater um and then in games like those two things are quite different yeah. <laughs> from both sides um it's and just so, weird yeah. how these those they're combining in what yeah. we're doing now yeah. It's just a combination of everything and like film as well. And then we're yeah. taking grammar from all these different mm. industries and these kind of rituals about getting mm. people into the, the space um, and making some cool new things. Yeah. experienced uh, a date a date <laughs> we went on a date yeah um, <laughs> which is Fun. very interesting yeah. um because there's no it wasn't a normal date uh, no, because yeah. we both have respective yeah. partners yeah <laughs> but it was a, a curated date by zoo mm -hmm. uk um i think i might fact check that later but i'm pretty sure it was by zoo uk yeah um and it's a date where you put in binaural headphones and you're kind of guided through a date scenario mm -hmm. and you have like kind of questions to ask each other introduce yeah. and then you'll there's spoiler warning from from now on because <laughs> we're gonna <laughs> gonna kind of delve into, dive it. into it yeah yeah um so how would you describe what we experienced for, as a as an audience member first yeah i mean i thought I mean, I did. I thought it was great. Mm. I thought the whole experience, and and I think they did really think about making it making it fun for yes. both participants. I think that was a really nice thing that they included. That it was almost a parody of itself at some point. Yeah, it was very satirical, wasn't yeah. it? It was, um, yeah, playing with the idea of yeah. a date and what yeah. happens on the dates and how yeah. people are on dates and how they mm. have um, certain expectations and how yeah. they, there was a great bit where they just completely yeah. encouraged us to lower our expectations <laughs> just to the very, the very lowest. Yeah. And playing with the idea about sentimentality mm. and uh, like the, what can, what's the worst that can happen on the date? That was a yeah. big theme. Uh, I thought it was in that regard, really quite successful because I thought it was just literally just going to be Yeah, I thought date. it was quite going to be quite serious yes. and, yeah. I, and I thought I w it would be really inappropriate if I was going to be laughing the whole time because because <laughs> it was I mean I was just be like this is just going to be fun yeah like and because obviously like you know you and me we both are yeah. in relationships I just thought this is just going to be funny yeah but the fact is is that it actually was enjoyable in and of itself yeah. I think was a great thing and I think that kind of spoke to this whole thing of you know on first dates and meeting someone for the first time especially as a stranger and yeah, having so was, that awkward kind of, yeah. you know, that awkward feeling of, you know, you don't really know, yeah. you know who this is. You're trying to get to know each other. So we kind of cheated because yeah. we already knew each other. Yes. And it was yeah. meant to be for complete strangers to, yeah. have, to have to do this experience. Mm. We went in as a group. <laughs> and kind of cheated Half a of bit. us were and, basically um, knew each other. <laughs> it was very funny. Um, yeah. I did. Yeah. I thought I just, I just, yeah, I thought it was great. I think if had we had been either with strangers or even with our respective partners. Because I think that was another yeah, thing. I think that would have been a good level. I think, yeah, I think it. just the things that they ask and go through, it does, without being too serious, it does get quite deep. It does. And I think that was a really, that was, I thought they did that quite well in terms of like having that bonding experience, yeah. but keeping it quite lighthearted in yeah. a sense. Yeah. So structurally it was, how, how would you describe it? Because it's in like a weird space between like yeah. immersive <laughs> theater, but like interactive. But then also like an actual dating yeah. agency type thing. Yeah. 
Yeah. Because yeah, because people did actually go to to actually date to ex- yeah. to actually find someone. And yeah, to actually experience that actual date, which was, which I think, yeah, which I think is is was quite interesting. Mm. In in terms kind of, of like te- technical point of view, yeah. Uh, how 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 successful would you say it was? Oh God, like because <laughs> it was pretty. It was yeah, pretty on point. I was gonna yeah, those oh those like headphones and the fa- yeah because we had it's that called really with, yeah it's called the binaural dinner date. Mm-hmm. So you're wearing binaural headphones the whole yeah. time, and you. You've you've got like a voice in your head occasionally. What I, what I was going to ask you: What gender was the voice for you? Female. Okay, it was female for me. Yeah. So I was wondering. I feel whether... like it, that was the host. That must have been the actual host. Because remember, at one point where we we're all looking out the window, and then oh, they and start, she started describing she actual starts stuff, stuff that we actually which talked was about. Looking out the window. It, I swear, it must have been the actual host. Because yeah. whether some parts must have been recorded or not beforehand i'm pretty sure like the because at one point the the voice in our heads mm-hmm. started saying uh, repeat after me yes and we had a conversation which yeah. was felt like a really deep conversation which was really yeah. honest and open and like yeah. a lovely um even though moment. even though it was curated even it, though the entire yeah. thing was curated it, even within we it, acting it, it just, out yeah and it, yeah. i think those kind of i've, I've really enjoyed <laughs> kind of putting little um like pauses in between words yeah. and like changing the like what's the like word the tone, the tone yeah. and like the cadence of how I mm-hmm. spoke those words just yeah. to see how I could make them feel realer <laughs> and it was really hilarious I, yeah. I, during that whole conversation I was like this is this is not real it's not happening this is yeah but I think that was nice about it because yeah. you both knew it was a performance yeah but in a way you you didn't then you kind of more enjoyed it's, that aspect of it, it rather than realer? rather than anything else. Do I you, think so, because, maybe, in a sense, yeah. Because you're concentrating more on what's being said yeah. rather than thinking about what you're going to say next. Exactly, yeah. I think there was less pressure to be like, I need to say something interesting. Yeah. Oh, my God. I, I would imagine if you were on an actual date with a stranger, there'd be less pressure to be like, I need to say something mm. because all that's done for you. And actually, the fun part is... Like, how are you just going to yeah. deliver this? And it didn't really matter. It's like it's concentrating on what yeah. the actual person is doing while they're saying things. Yeah. I really... They they have, a, like, a mic in the middle of the table yes. as well. Yeah. Which is very similar to this mic, but yeah. different colour. It records certain... I, I didn't realise this. I should have known at the first because it's a mic. But they record bits of our conversation and then play yeah. it back to us later. Mm-hmm. And I reckon they also... Like, the host or the guy on the laptop takes... Yes what we're saying and um, manipulates the, the the other aspects of the, the, the different parts of the date. Because they take in information from our, yeah. what we're... Cause what like we're in the, because about. in the be- beginning, how it starts off is like you sit down and they almost give you like a starter menu of like yes. conversations, yeah, yeah. right? And um, you know, it gives you different topics that you need to speak about. Um, and once you but once you put like these headphones in, you can yeah. literally only really actually hear the other person who you're actually sitting with. Yeah. Um, because you have yeah, a microphone. Yeah, that was cool. Yeah, because you was... have a microphone and mm. all the noise is basically concentrated on yeah. what you're saying. Obviously, some part um, at maybe the middle or the end mm. of the date, they play you back that first conversation that yeah. you've actually had. Um so yeah, I, I actually didn't realize that they were gonna, I was I was blissfully just unaware, just be like, oh, this is we, just a cool thing. Like we went in relatively yeah. un, uninformed about what. Yeah. I think we were quite a good kind of base. Audience. Yeah, I think, but also I think everyone else who had done it was really careful to not actually give away anything. Mm. Do you get what I mean? They everyone was like, you just need to do it. Yeah. You just we can. You just need. To yes. Do it. Yeah. So everyone we spoke to beforehand was just like, you you'll see. Yeah, exactly. It was really good. So, but I thought that was a really cool aspect in terms of you know, using tech mm. in that regard. I think even just concentrating, you know, both your voices in that conversation. So that you can just clearly hear yeah. what the other person is saying. Because I think, again, especially in that setting, you are actually sitting quite close to other tables. Yeah. And I think the main thing is, is that you feel really self-conscious because, especially if you're playing games or doing something silly, yeah. is that you're concentrating on what everyone else is doing. Yeah. And I think that was such a good way to just be like, you just, you're literally just focusing on yeah. the person because that's really all you can hear. Yeah. And that just drowns out everyone else. Do you think it could have worked as like just a straight 
bit of theatre. Same kind of ideas coming I don't across. Know. Maybe, yeah. Maybe three like three couples in a, on a stage, and each one takes turn in talking, doing mm-hmm. the various kind of games or whatever, and the the waiter goes through and does his things as well. But uh, yeah, it maybe. just would not it, w- the the embodiment of us mm. being inside yeah. the the dates. Yeah, I think was the probably the the key in it, and it's yeah. it's that that kind of um, intimate interactivity yeah. with a, an experience mm. which is like hyper real yeah. because it's it's there's like layers of extra stuff coming on yeah <laughs> like a, like a UI in a game it's yeah. kind of an extra layer of yeah. interaction we've got this kind of extra layer of, of kind of curated conversation mm-hmm. yeah. and then and then um, almost like a, a kind of a film like narrative with a, yes. the waiter which kind of unfolds mm. has uh, acts yeah um, throughout the but I think thing. that I think that's maybe that was the whole point that what made it so great especially as if you, if you were going to go on a dating experience mm. because it had almost like this movie like theatrical quality mm. to it because imagine if you had met your significant other at that that would have been crazy that would have been that would have been sick that would, yeah. I just I think that would have been something that you would have been talking about because they because they do talk about it sentiment for like a long yeah. lot Mm. And you're you're you you're made to like um, do a, like a portrait of each other, yes. and you you give like stickers and you draw on each other's hands and on their mm. faces and things, um, and you're given like these little. It's quite like an intimate thing and it quite is. close, without being weird about it. Yeah, they, in fact, mm-hmm. because previously in the panel they were talking about finding the the right space between yeah. not being creepy and being creepy. Yeah. In terms of like boundaries and intimacy, yes, they've nailed that. I think I thought that was really good. Yeah. Like for example, there was that one point where I had to put that sticker like on your. Yeah, I didn't realize you were going to do that. Yeah, so on your cheek. Yeah, but then Did also they tell you to do that. Put it on yes, their cheek. Yes, so they or they I think they just said put it on your face okay. or whatever. But also, and this is like I didn't really do it because I was just like okay, like, <laughs> <laughs> but it does ask you okay. Well, now you need to like kiss wherever they put yeah. it on. Which I was a bit. <laughs> that one really f- surprised me. I forgot about that actually. Yeah. And I was like, which, Dude. which, but I feel like at that time, like the way they've done it, because it's so gradual. Yeah. It you was kind a, of it doesn't seem like such a, a big leap into it. Yeah, rather than just being like you know. Yeah, because if they, if that was like one of the first things you had to do, you'd probably feel really uncomfortable like, to do that. No, thank but you. But there is like this is whole build up of. You know, bonding, asking questions, yeah. getting to know each other, and and then having that playful nature yes. in it, where it's it's not, it is a bit of fun. Yeah. So you know, it's kind of like, it's you know, well, it's a little bit like oh, you know, you're just getting to know each other and yeah. whatever, whatever, whatever. And then that kind of adds to another thing they were talking mm. about in the panel about um, kind of theatrical tricks or yes. kind of psychological um, mirroring and all that kind of yeah. tricks, tricks or manipulation. Yeah. Those are all bad words. Um, <laughs> encouragement to get to draw yeah. people out of themselves yeah. um, and that's another f- kind of thing which fascinates me and how far do we go with that mm. with an audience to yeah. get that's them probably into why the they space we want them as well, right yeah we were, we were given <laughs> alcoholic drinks as well, well yeah, was, you could it, choose non-alcoholic yeah. as well but, but, but I mean they gave us a that. pretty strong shot which I feel like again was a bit like you know yeah. if you're on a day it's a bit of Dutch courage yeah exactly they're just yeah. like right might as well <laughs> yeah so it was they I think they they thought about the well-being of the participant audience member or whatever mm. like, like at its core yes. and I thought that that was done really really well yeah um, I think well, it was all it was all about be getting to know somebody better. Yeah. So, in in kind of curating that they mm. and keeping the audience participants uh, at the centre, then then mm. and getting to know the audience, so then they can get to know each yeah. other better. Yeah. They they've done that. I think they well. yeah they did that really really well. Um, even that ending part with yes the so <laughs> in terms of like looking after the audience yeah the at the very end spoilers um the waiter yeah um actually grabs a woman off the street yeah. and sits her down outside 
uh, on the street on a table which uh, magically appeared. Yeah, exactly. And, <laughs> I just was like, oh, yeah, wow. Yeah, there's a table outside now. <laughs> um, and coerced her into sitting down yeah. and chatting to her and trying to get her to be on a date with him. Yeah. Um, and it was like the whole narration was what's the worst that could happen. Yeah. And it was almost showing like this really this is like the worst dire, that can happen. Like, yeah. desperate situation which could be the worst. Yeah. Which almost made you feel like glad I'm not like that. Glad that's not happening yeah. here. Like may- maybe they included that just so um, if the date was, was going, going really terribly. badly, then, <laughs> then it's he was okay. like, "Sorry, right, yeah, you're not yeah. that guy." Yeah, at least you're not the the poor poor yeah. waiter who was just waiting, Who's literally waiting, waiting, waiting for, for someone, his, his um, perfect date to come along. Yeah, but I I was con- a little bit concerned for the the woman he grabbed off the street. I was a little bit well-being. as well because she was She seemed genuinely a She genuinely bit... thought that she, remember she kept asking like where is there a yeah, TV? Where's the camera? Where's yeah. the camera? Like why are all these we people were all We were all staring at her <laughs> we were through like the window. Staring through this window like at least 18 and like, people. Come on, come on. <laughs> we're like Sit go. Down. <laughs> She's like freaking yeah, out but people. I the I I mean I did see one of you know, there yes, was a woman that ran out, Alice I think, who was from, out, yeah. from the production that probably went to just be like, Sorry. By the way, <laughs> yeah. it's okay. Exactly, this is actually a performance. Because, yeah. yeah, he didn't actually say during it, obviously, because it was part of yeah. the whole thing. But, um, but yeah, I thought that was... And I guess, I, I mean, yeah, as part of it, I'm, Do you I reckon, think that kind um, of... Is there anything off the back of that would you say that you were critical about the experience? Mm. Difficult one. Yeah, I don't know. I think because it, it was it's so different. Yeah. To like what I would have expected anyway. Yeah. There's a lot of there's I not think, a lot of precedent. Yeah. Precedent. Yeah. On what's uh, is there's not a lot of mm. general critical yeah voices out there at the moment for like these kind of. I think the only thing, and I remember I did speak to um, one of the guys that did create it. Um, well, um, George about oh it. yes yeah, um, and he was saying that sometimes what they do get, especially people who are there for dates, is matching them up. Oh yeah, and obviously they have a host there who kind of plays matchmaker again. She you know sits you down. She might change you around within the seat. Yeah. Um, and they can't. She's like the sorting hat. She takes your opinion much. into yeah, account. Yeah, she kind of yeah. She will just be like, you know, do you mind going with someone else yeah. or whatever, whatever. Especially if you're in a group. But um, he was saying that there was a situation where they they had a group of women, single women, come, um, who were literally like, we've come here for a date. Like we've got all dressed up. We're here to find someone. So you better oh. pair me with a guy that I'm gonna like. Right. Which obviously they were like, okay, yeah, we're going to try. Yeah. But it just so happened at that booking, they just had an abundance of women. Oh. And obviously it was one of those things where they just couldn't, again, yeah. it's not it's like, they, the yeah, they just couldn't thing. really do much about that. And I think that's the one thing, again, it's that kind of managing that expectation, yeah. which I feel like they have in a way try to do that on the event itself to be like, it's not like, we're not like a dating agency. Yes. Um, yeah. And, you know, it is, it does have this kind of performative, you know, aspect, an interactive aspect to it. Um, but, yeah, I can kind of see, obviously, especially with the whole title of it, how, and, you know, it is something quite unique as well. Um, yeah, if you were kind of going to, if you were going to go, I might be a bit disappointing if you didn't kind of pair up with someone yeah. that you were, you know, you actually you thought of that. clicked with. Yeah, exactly. Um but I mean, they said they were hoping potentially in the future they might pair up with a dating oh, yeah. site like Match.com or something or eHarmony. That'd be quite interesting. And yeah, and yeah. actually get a pool of people who you know are that actually looking really to find someone and seeing how that would go. Yeah. And again, because there's the whole thing what they were saying is that they didn't know because there's such a range of people and what they're what they're there for. Um, they don't know how many couples from that then go mm. off and actually are together. So I'd be interested to see like whether it does actually foster a connection, which I think it does. Mm. I definitely think it does. I feel like we got closer. Oh yeah. So. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. I think it does actually foster like quite in like quite a deep connection. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, I'd be interested to see how many people from that actually do end off. Yeah, I'm curious to find out what other people thought of it. Mm. Um, generally as well, I've, I've kind of posted on yeah um, the immersive 
yeah. Slack and see if anybody else mm. had done it. No, yeah. I have not heard anything yet. <laughs> <laughs> They're pretty. Um, yeah, I'd be interested because also like couples do it together as well. Yeah. And remember, um, Catherine, Catherine Allen from yes, Lemon and yeah. Mercy, she was there with her partner. Um, and uh, they were saying how, I mean, they were saying that some of the questions were, you know, a bit deep and it works if you're with a stranger because the whole point is that even if it goes badly, you don't ever have to see yeah, them again. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then maybe if you do it with a partner, it's like, well, we got to talk about, about a few things. talk about that later, yeah. talk about a few things. But then yeah. I feel like that's just such, that's a, just gr- such a great life. way, though. Yeah. Such a great way, again, even just strengthening your own yes. relationship. Yeah. Spice because it does, you know, Keep ask you some, toes. yeah, hard kind of hitting questions mm. in a sense so totally. yeah i thought it was great and uh, and it also was really cheap it was 15 quid wasn't 15 it 15 quid yeah, yeah for like a whole hour it, and I a mean, free drink that, yeah food free drink and free little toy yeah free, yeah free little toy and <laughs> then you play games and you have a whole other. um like it performance was highly entertaining yeah for, for the whole time quid. yeah the whole time yeah because they and it was like yeah. an escalation level of because they even do because awesomeness. they did sort of like account you know oh you're 17 minutes into yeah. your day and i was always surprised about how far we were yeah how much time had passed and i think actually that's quite a clever thing to be honest because in that respect i think it is like oh shit actually yeah so we've actually got a lot done in Mm. that amount of time as well and how much you can actually get to know someone in such a short space of time as well so yeah no it's great for real okay i think we'll leave it there sweet all right then thank you for talking to me about the zoo tag and everything and dinner date and thank you for going on a date with me to begin with (laughs) even though you didn't have a choice And, uh, I thought it was fine though. I thought it was great. I think yeah. we kind of laughed at the, oh, that, man. Remember that first part. That first bit, <laughs> yeah, was so with funny. the um, the icebreaker. It was just like, maybe this look person at them. is a beep. Yeah, that was absolutely. Do you want to fuck them? Yeah, it was just like exactly, whoa. Yes. <laughs> yeah, man. It was. Um, that was great. It was that was great. I wonder if it's on again because I would definitely want yeah, to take my. Yeah, if partner. it's, I'm gonna mm. do a like a bit of research yes. and for anybody's listening. I'll post it in the description if, yes. when it's next on or where it is. Because the one we went to see was way up in London. London, yeah. Um, not in the southwest, unfortunately. But hopefully it will tour hopefully. at some point. Fingers crossed. Because um, it's really worth it. Well, now you know everything about it because we're chatting about it. But um, They put like a disclaimer or a link yeah. beforehand. Just yeah, to be like... I'll put it at the beginning. <laughs> the, just to say. This is a spoiler, but if you want to see it, here it is. Yeah. Yeah, then yeah. listen to this podcast. Or maybe you put like a little like recording just to be like, by the way, if you don't want any spoilers, but want to go yeah. on this thing. I'll do that then. Yeah. Do that so they've already heard it. <laughs> 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 kind of like Bill and Ted. Yeah, exactly. Awesome adventure. There you go. Brill. All right, cool. Uh, is there anything you want for audiences to say like uh, to contact you or anything? Or if they want to chat to you about things, how do they get in contact with you if you want that? If not, just say fuck off. Yeah, I don't want anyone <laughs> contacting me ever. I hate people. No, well, <laughs> um, yeah, I guess my, my Twitter mm-hmm. um, would probably be the best place for that. I think it's, fuck, I don't know what my Twitter <laughs> is. You know, it's one of those things where it's like, I don't actually look at my Twitter handle enough. Chris M. Con. I feel like, yes, That's it is. All right, cool. So. At Chris M. Con. At Chris M. Con. Real. That is me. If you want to ask me weird and wonderful questions, you can call yeah. that. About so. game design. And About, yeah, ga- yeah, preferably game design. Yeah, you know, you can keep area. it on topic. That'd be cool. But also, if you just want to chat, that's fine as well. Cool. <laughs> Brill. But yeah, cheers. Thanks for Thanks having me. Thanks very much. Have fun. I will see you next week. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks again to Chris for chatting to me about our trip to London. And thank you for listening. As you know, this podcast has the aim to cultivate creativity in the immersive spaces in the Southwest and beyond. So if you're keen to get involved, you can tweet me at Hasmus or just follow the Southwest Creative Technology Network on Twitter. The Swakatun, as people are abbreviating it these days, is the reason why this podcast exists. So just follow them, you'll find out everything you need to know. The musical intervals on this podcast are by Glad Rags and the track is called TikTok. Uh, but I'm keen to find a Southwest-based artist or musician to help fill those spaces with some cool, unique, maybe slightly spacey tunes, because I think that'll be better. Thanks again for listening, and I look forward to hearing all your thoughts about the topics that me and Chris just talked about, and I'll see you in the future. Cheers!